Genetics are essentially the boogeyman of Osu, for good reason. Many players who have not had their desired success in the game love the idea, since they can use it and not their lack of dedication to explain why they, well, suck. The idea also has an especially bad rap among top players, since it's often used as a tool to discredit their well-earned achievements. This made me pretty interested in the concept, and so a while back I made a video on it. And let's just say it wasn't great. For some reason, you want to become a high level speed player with awful genetics, you can just use Tab ZX. But with players like Doki and Yazen using it to great success, like properly streaming Hidamaru no Uda, and even hitting space streams, it's pretty obvious that this playstyle is actually really viable. And so Spazza17 made a video responding and correcting me, and when I responded in the comments of that video, I said, at some point, I think I'll try and make a genetics revised. And so, after a long break from the topic, here is that video. This is In Search of Ozu Genetics. When setting out to make this video, I was pretty conflicted, since while in my first video I talked a lot about how one might be able to improve faster with a different mindset, I never really decided to take the time to discover whether or not genetics actually existed. This is why the goal of this video is a bit different, since what I want to achieve is some evidence of genetics, so that people can at least make an informed decision. But when trying to do this, I immediately ran into a problem. And that is that no one has ever done a study on Osu, and it's likely no one ever will. Video over, right? Well, no. Since although no one has ever done a study on Osu, there are certainly things that could be applicable to the game. So let's look through some of those things and try to come to a sensible conclusion. For this, I'm going to be using an article called Genetic and Environmental Influences on Perceptual Motor Abilities. This is a study only concerning baseline skill, and not improvement, which is already where we have to start to infer. And so what I'm going to be assuming here is that your aptitude for things like hand-eye coordination are related to how quickly you improve at it. I'll also touch on why this is almost certainly the case a bit later. I'll mainly be focusing on one part of this study, which is hand-eye coordination. This is because it is, in essence, the main goal of Osu, since, you know, the game is seeing something, moving your cursor to it, and then exactly timing a click with where you've seen it. So first, how did they test those things? Well, they tested sets of twins, some identical and some fraternal, and used the fact that identicals will share 100% of the same genetics, and fraternals will only share 50%, to look at the role which genetics played on these skills. The test they used for the study was this machine, once again, we obviously have to ask the question of how related this is to Osu. But because of the way this test is done, I think it's fairly close. Still though, it's entirely up to you how much weight you put on these findings. I did choose this test though because I thought it was fairly similar. With the best example I can give being that this is the online version of the hand-eye coordination test. This is why I think that it's finding that hand-eye coordination is 26% genetics based is a pretty big deal. You can obviously look at this in any way, but what I think it does point to is that there's a fairly large genetic component to the aim aspect of Osu. Although this once again immediately brings up another question, of how much the hand movement aspect of aim is actually the hard part. I say this because many players like to play relax, because when cutting out any rhythmic aspect of Osu, the game becomes exponentially easier. This, along with the lack of sports research that could give us any insight into the rhythmic aspect of Osu, or why I think it's important to look at a different kind of research. One of the best ways to describe Osu, and especially learning Osu, is that it's like learning an instrument, since nearly every aspect of the game can be correlated with playing an instrument. Like using guitar as an example, you have to use your left hand to aim at places on the frets, while using your other hand to tap along to the rhythm. On top of this, it's also one of the best ways to describe how improvement works in Osu. The only thing is that research in this field is not quite as abundant as athletics research, and so the main study I'm using made its conclusion off self-reporting, which does make this information a fair bit less concrete. I think its conclusion could still give some good insight though. This is because it comes to a pretty extreme conclusion, which is that not only are genetics a huge factor in improvement, but on top of this, the more you practice, the more genetics matter. I think this is also helpful, since the conclusion is far enough to one side, that even with a certain amount of expected misremembering or embellishing on the part of the participants, there is almost certainly a genetic aspect to it. This is also combined with the findings that came out of the incident of the 10,000 hour study. 
which is a study that came to the conclusion that after practicing 10,000 hours, anyone could master the violin. This was a pretty famous study, but it actually turned out to be extremely flawed, and through its dismantling, we can see a lot, since it was found that age and genetics were both hugely influential, and they could cause the time that it took to become a master to fluctuate tenfold. Once again, you're going to have to make the decision of how much this point is related to Osu, which is basically all I've been saying throughout this video. Which is why I do want to touch on why I think this does all matter. I think it's interesting not only to see the exact parallels between these scenarios and playing Osu, but also to look at the general trend and ask, why would it be any different in Osu? Like, through sports study, we found that hand-eye coordination had a pretty large genetic component. And through music studies, it was found that there was large correlation between genetics and the time it takes to become a master. And especially through the 10,000 hour study, it was found that becoming a master could take between 700 and 16,000 hours. Because of various differences. I say various because this is not only genetics based, but also age based. You could see this obviously through anecdotal evidence, like Vaxe, White Cat, and Emrek all starting Osu at a young age and becoming incredibly skilled. But there's also real studies that have been done that showed that chess players who started earlier had to practice many fewer hours than those who started later to become a master. Which also makes this probably the most concrete piece of evidence. These studies don't talk much about one thing though, and that's how much deliberate practice, or playing to improve, matters in comparison to genetics. But luckily, there are studies that take a look at that. And luckily for me, there was an analysis of 88 of these different papers, which found that deliberate practice only made a 26% difference for games, 21% for music, and 18% for sports. This actually gives a pretty good answer to the idea raised in my last video, of maybe the true way to succeed in Osu is through deliberate practice, with a resounding sort of. Since while 26 to 18% is a large difference, it seems like it's likely about equal to genetics and pales in comparison to sheer time playing. So what does this mean about how you should play? Well, funnily enough, these things show that the best way to improve at Osu is to start young, have better than average hand-eye coordination, practice deliberately, but most of all, play more. I do still want to note though, that none of this is absolute fact. Many studies on this topic vary hugely in the amount of improvement they attribute to genetics. And on top of this, it's also debatable how applicable these all are to Osu. Also, even these studies are not definitive in their own field, with the easiest example being the 10,000 hour study, which was widely cited despite being almost certainly false. This is why there is no simple answer to the question of do genetics exist? Although I think there's enough information to make a vague conclusion that goes something like, Genetics almost certainly play a role in Osu, the extent of which is highly debatable. Which is why, until someone extremely knowledgeable does a real test of how improvement is affected by it, there will be no real right answer. In the end though, you'll never know your potential until you put in the effort and truly try to become the best and surpass your limits. I think overall it might be best if we don't have a definitive answer to the question of genetics, since it means that we're really the only ones capable of deciding our own destiny of seeing how far we can truly go, and of pushing the limits past where they've gone before. And I think that's pretty awesome.